So we're talking about the general steps involved in doing a multiple linear regression. Uh, the next things to consider are the assumptions. We've already been talking about the levels of measurement for the independent and dependent variables. Uh, we would also consider the sample size, whether or not the relationships between the variables are linear, uh, whether those relationships are homoskedastistic, whether the independent variables are overly correlated, which is multicollinearity, whether there are multivariate outliers, which is where one or more cases have an unusual combination of responses to the variables being used in the analysis, and are the residuals normally distributed, and the residuals of this is the distance, vertical distance, between the predicted scores and the observed scores. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in a moment. The fourth step in uh, for doing an MLR is to choose which type of MLR you're going to use. And the choices are between standard or direct MLR, which is probably what you're going to do if you don't know what else to do. So it's the most common and um, readily utilized technique. If you have a particular reason to enter your ver your independent variables in an order and or, or group them up into separate sets then you would use hierarchical and if you wanted to let the computer choose for you then which predictors go in and out then use stepwise which is a combination of forward or backward or forward or backward uh, regression. The fifth step is to interpret the statistical output and try and make psychological meaning and sense of the results. What causes what and how much of an impact does it have on explaining the dependent uh, the variable. Now the output that you'll get essentially will tell you this sort of information. First of all the big R which is the multiple correlation coefficient interpreted much like little r. Uh, the r squared which is the coefficient of determination or the multiple correlation coefficient squared and we can interpret that as the percentage of variance in the dependent variable that is explained collectively by the independent variables. We have the adjusted r squared which is going to be close to the R squared but slightly smaller and it's a, a penalty is applied depending on the sample size. If the sample size is small you'll get a relatively large penalty. If it's large there will be little, little difference. Uh, R squared is the variance explained in the sample. Adjusted R squared is the variance explained if we were to generalize from the sample to the population and then you'll also get the level of significance of these of the R. In other words, could this amount of variance explained have occurred by chance or are we going to reject the idea it could have occurred by chance and say there probably are relationships, linear relationships between the variables. The output will also give you the change in R if you did a hierarchical multiple linear regression and the significance of that change. Then you'll get a table called regression coefficients and for each independent variables, variable you'll get the unstandardized and standardized regression coefficient. Unstandardized is good for building a formula prediction equation and for comparing uh, different models with the same independent variables. Standardized beta is good for comparing the strength of the predictors within an analysis. Uh, you'll get a significant score for these um, for the regression coefficients. The zero order correlation, which is the Pearson product moment correlation, that you'll probably see up earlier if you ask for the um, correlation table, but also the partial correlations, which we'll explain later. It can be helpful then to draw the relationships as a path or Venn diagram to help you understand the results, and finally provide the regression equation if you're trying to use the research for predictive purposes.